Hello and welcome to another episode of All Things Real Estate. And as always, I am your host, Kyle Seabeth with Century 21 Real Estate. And unlike any other episode, we have two special guests, not just one, we have two special guests with us today. And today I would like them to introduce themselves to you. So I'll start with the young lady on my right. I am Taylor Swanson. Taylor, and you are, what do you do, Taylor? I'm a real estate agent. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So Taylor is a real estate agent. She joined Century 21 um, probably about a month or so ago, would you say? Yeah. Uh, probably give or take a month or two ago. Um, so she's come over. She's with us now in the organization. We are super excited to have her. And then the other young lady on, the, on, my, on my right. I'm Sidel Stinson. I'm also a real estate agent. We're both with the Century 21 Premier Agency, soon to open an office in Cumberland. Not sh exactly sure when, but. Yes, yeah, so we have, uh, so these guys are working out of the Cumberland office. Uh, Cumberland is finalizing the finishing touches right now. I don't know if you guys have been over there, but it's pretty much done. Furniture has been ordered, oh, yeah, stuff is coming time. in. Um, office space is, is up and running, so it's exciting. It's mm -hmm. good to have. And, and to your point, what we've tried to do is build little small satellite offices throughout Rhode Island. So we have Cumberland, we have Seekonk, obviously, in southeastern Mass. We have Gloucester. We have Providence, which is done up and running. Mm -hmm. Gloucester, done up and running. We just signed on our Warwick office, which is really, really exciting. So they're ready to go. So any of you guys want to go work out of Warwick, that's fine as well. Right. Um, and we have a potential in North Kingstown. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got a group coming over, meeting with them this week, potentially in North mm -hmm. Kingstown. So super exciting. Yeah. So you guys, so both of you are, how long have you been in real estate? About like two years. Two I'd years. Say. Two years. Yeah. Both two years. Same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So you're both newbies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we actually, I remember when we first got into it, we were obviously with different brokerages, and we met. We were at a fundraiser, and it was just funny because we were just talking about the different brokerages we were with, and I never expected two years later right. we we're going to be, be together. in the same office, <laughs> working together. It's just funny how things unfold, change, and move, <laughs> and, and adjust. Yeah. So you guys, so we like to talk to the audience and kind of give them different tips and guidance and ideas in real estate. So I'll, I'll just ask a quick question for both of you, and you both have your own answers, obviously. So Taylor, um, what would you say, if you were to give any advice right now to someone looking to sell a property, what would that advice be? I would definitely say now is the time. It's obviously a perfect time for sellers, but it's also a great time you know, for buyers. You know, The price is a little bit increase as far as what they'd ideally like to pay. But with the interest rates being so low, it's definitely a great time, I feel like, for both ends, really. Mm. Yeah, I think you hit it on the head, right? So we normally wouldn't have, it's really hard to say, okay, we have a seller's market, but it's still good for buyers, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't mm -hmm. make much sense. But in this situation, it does. And why does it make sense? It makes sense because buyers have low rates, mm -hmm. so purchasing power now is high. Mm -hmm. Sellers have low inventory, so the ability to sell at a high price is, is a high probability. Exactly. So those two things make for a market that could be conducive to buyers and also be conducive to sellers. Exactly. And I think your point on sellers, like, there's no other advice besides list your property. Exactly. <laughs> point blank, period, end of story, exclamation point, mm -hmm. list it now get it on the market, exactly. beat the rush, because I think 2021 is gonna be chaos. Mm -hmm. I think you're gonna see people, tons of sellers, tons of buyers, and this market will continue to explode. Mm -hmm. So I think the ability to list now and take advantage, I think that's great advice. Mm -hmm. And Sadell, yeah, so what advice. advice would you give, I'm gonna spin that question a little bit, what advice would you give to a buyer right now? Buyers, I would definitely say, have all of your ducks in a row. Obviously have your pre-approval, um, but just be ready to act immediately if you like something. Don't, don't even sleep on it because it most likely won't always be there the next day even. Um, and just obviously find an agent that is willing to go to bat for you too because I, I see a lot of buyers out there and you know they can't, they can't get in touch with their agent. Their agent's you know, just MIA some of the times and you need to have an agent that, that is constantly ready to answer any of your questions because it moves fast from the mm -hmm. minute that you see a property that you fall in love with. It's just, you know, it goes so quickly that you need to have somebody that's on the end of the phone for any question that comes about. Mm -hmm. I think, I think your, um, your statement was spot on, right? So buyers, you need to have an agent that's aggressive. Mm -hmm. 
because in this market, I think you said buyers don't sleep on it, right? If you sleep on it, you sleep on it. And what I mean by that is like, if you sleep on the house, you're sleeping on the fact that you're gonna get it. You're not gonna get it. Right. It's gone in the morning. Mm -hmm. You see a house at five, if you don't have an offering by nine, mm -hmm. there's a good chance that house is gone. Exactly. There right. is no opportunity, there's no second chance, there's no second, it is what it is, it is gone. So I think on, on the buy side, it's get your pre-approval, mm -hmm. right? Understand what you want and understand the cities and towns and price points. So you know from there, once you see that, that house, boom, you gotta make a decision. Absolutely. It's point blank, period. Right. And, and, and another question for both of you, and I, you know, maybe you give me one or two bullets and you give me two. If I were looking to buy, so I'm a new buyer. <coughs> a new buyer, I'm excited, I'm pre-approved. <laughs> I have no idea what to do, I'm, I'm nervous, I don't really know what to do. I need to find an agent. What are the two qualities you think that people should look for in, in real estate agents that help that buyer, now on the buy side, not the sell side, help the buyer become successful? So, and as an agent, I think that you need to find someone that's very trustworthy because that's a huge point. If the trust isn't there, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's just not there. Right, right, mm -hmm. yeah. If you can't trust the person, how are you going to work right. with them? And, Absolutely. and reliable because, you know, it's, <laughs> you need to be reliable. Yeah, I think those are two great points. I think if you have a, if you're a buyer and you're looking to work with an agent, right, they need to be trustworthy where the biggest purchase you'll probably ever make mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. in this person's hands. Mm -hmm. If this person can't execute on that purchase, then we're going to have a problem. We're not going to be able to get to the end, and I can't trust that we're going to finish and finalize what we're looking to do. Mm -hmm. Number two, you said reliability. Mm -hmm. Reliability, I think, kind of ties into what you said. Mm. They need to be able to answer the phone. Mm -hmm. right. They need to be accessible. They need to be someone that you can, you know that if you ask a question, they're gonna mm -hmm. give you a trustworthy answer. Mm -hmm. So I think those are two really good bullet points that people can look for mm -hmm. when they're looking to find an agent. Um, so those, those are great and I think that's great advice to the audience and people that are listening and watching. Uh, how about yourself? Um, I would say the first one that I, I like to point out is efficient because when I'm a seller's agent and I look at the offers that come in, I really do see the different, you know, um, presentations, if you will, on offers. Just being able to have all, everything organized for you because you're putting your offer in, in essentially your agent's hands right. to get approved. Um, and then empathetic too because I just, I feel like in a way we are therapists. <laughs> Right, <laughs> And just to be able to understand that this is a stressful time and we're going to try to take all of the stress or most of the stress on ourselves for mm -hmm. you so that it can actually, you know, you can be less stressed out during the process. <laughs> yeah, I think empathy um, is one that a lot of people don't understand and realize. Like mm -hmm. we as agents, uh, all three of us, we become the shrink. <laughs> we become... You know, hey, look, I'll tell you, there's so many situations I've had where, uh, you know, the son may be buying the house for the parents and doesn't want, you know, the parents want certain things and the son is confused and there's, you know, an adult, you know, it's a son in his 20s or 30s and he's buying it so the parents can live on one floor and he lives on the other. Mm -hmm. And we have to kind of navigate between that little tension there. Then yeah. you can have a situation where it's a husband and wife and the husband may like it and the wife may not. Mm -hmm. You may have situations when it's a, it's a, it's a single female and, you know, her mom and dad come to the showings and they're, they're battering every appointment. They don't like any house she looks at. So there's so many situations where we have to act almost unemotional, right. but mm -hmm. at the same time give good guidance that is in the best interest of the client. Absolutely. And, and what I call that is the fiduciary interest of, of, of the right. client. So we need mm -hmm. to have that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think those are two really good, really, really good things that on both of you, there's four good points there mm -hmm. that people should look for um, with their agents. One thing I'll add is I think that one of the biggest, most important things when you find or you're looking for an agent is it has to be someone that's relatable to you, relatable. right? Definitely. So I can't relate to everyone. Mm -hmm. You don't relate to everyone. Exactly. You don't relate to everyone. Mm -hmm. If we don't relate to our client, that relationship from the beginning is not going to work mm -hmm. because there's going to be a disconnect there. At some point, that disconnect will come up. Mm -hmm. And at some point, you'll have to, it'll, it'll come to a point, it'll come to a head, and that relationship will be tarnished, right? right. So it's, it's important as a buyer that you're focused on finding someone that's relatable to you. Absolutely. Um, I agree. You have to click. 
Correct, <laughs> correct, correct. So what are your thoughts on the market? Um, we're, we're talking the day after election, right? Yeah. So it's like the morning after, yeah. morning <laughs> after election. So we don't even know, guys, who won or what that looks like or how that translates. I did a video yesterday, and I always do these little morning videos, and my video yesterday was like, worry about the things you can control. Mm -hmm. And I right. think it's really important that we focus as agents on the things we can control, and we help our clients focus on what they can control. Mm -hmm. But what are your thoughts overall on how will the market react to the election if there will be any sort of uh, snapback reaction? And then secondly, what's your thoughts on how COVID kind of plays a role in the rest of this year into the winter of, of 2021? So I'll start with you, Sadell. So what are your Great thoughts question. on that? Great um, question. Well, not knowing who actually wins the election, um, I think that people will probably maybe freeze up a little bit for two reasons, COVID, you know, being in the winter and the fact that they just, the unknown. And, um, but I do believe, obviously, rates are still going to stay low and inventory is still going to stay low. So if you already have been looking, there's still going to be, looking for something to move into right. and i mean a lot of people that sold their houses are probably living in hotels still so they are still mm -hmm. going to be buyers out there right mm -hmm. um and i know this is to your point kyle you said that next year could potentially bring more inventory and be the best year that we've had in real estate and i keep mm -hmm. hanging on to that because i think that it really is what's to come yeah, I think everything's po pointing that way. I think um, you missed an entire selling season of 2020. Right. Uh, you have a ton of buyers. You have low rates. Uh, whether there's whoever wins, whatever that looks like, I think that won't really translate for a year or so. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think it's going to really – I think your answer is spot on. I think the election is, um, is something that with COVID could make people pause. But at the end of the day, people still need to move. People mm -hmm. no, still need to find a home. Mm -hmm. People need to downsize. People have reasons they need to sell. So mm -hmm. there's so many different things that at the end of the day will force, will force the sales of properties and right. also people are there to buy. Exactly. So are you, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, I definitely agree. And you know, like you said, as far as next year, I think that you know, if things kind of settle down, it's gonna bring a lot of more inventory to the market, hopefully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but you know, selling now versus next year is you don't really have that competition. Correct. So, and you know, like Sadell said, there's still buyers out there. You know, people that are selling, they need somewhere you know to go, mm -hmm. and it's tough when you know you're looking for a specific property and it's very very limited out there. Mm -hmm. um, so I agree. I think hopefully you know everything stays steady as far as how it's been. Um, but same thing, rates are still going to be low. There's still going to be buyers out there, and there's still low inventory. So. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, and I think uh, going into the last half of this year, so the last quarter, we're in the fourth quarter, right? So we're at the end. Um, I think normally I would say, hey, around Thanksgiving and Christmas, things slow down. I just don't see that. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing that makes it slow down here in New England is the weather. Mm -hmm. weather. Yeah. Once you hit snow, people start to pump the brakes a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, guidance and advice to sellers if you have a real terrible yard, there's no better time to sell your house than in the winter. <laughs> Why? Because everyone's grass dies and because snow can cover a lot of things. So That's if you have true. a terrible yard, there is absolutely no better time for you to put your house on the market than December, very January, true. February. Very so true. if you guys want to take that piece of advice and share it with your people with bad yards, yeah. it works out really well. Um, so that, I think that sums up exactly kind of what we were all talking about. Mm -hmm. So you guys came over, you guys are with uh, prior with other firms, you guys were with other mm -hmm. institutions, other firms, and you were participating in real estate. Mm -hmm. You've come over, and I think we, you know we appreciate you. We want to support you guys. Is there anything else that you would give advice to, you know, agents, buyers, sellers right now as we kind of tighten up and, and, and finalize here? Um, I think advice for buyers. I think right now, especially with you know being so much competition against a certain property is be patient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've dealt with so many buyers that, you know, they didn't win, you know, their offer on a specific property, but I ended up getting them into another and they were so happy and thankful that it ended up working out the way it did because, you know, they felt that was just a better fit for them. So, you know, of course in the moment you're upset, you know, if your offer doesn't get accepted, but I feel like everything that's meant to be will be, mm -hmm. you know, and you end up 
everything works out in the end pretty Happier, much. So, maybe. you know, just mm -hmm. be patient with And with I think your, your one quote there, um, I probably say it 15 times a week. If it's meant to be, it'll be. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, everything that's meant to happen happens. And I think that, that really happens with buyers too. Hey, I didn't get that house. Six months later, I got this house, and this mm -hmm. house is better. Exactly. So I think you need to look at that and understand that. So I would say, yeah, I would agree with that 1,000%. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. any parting words for you on your end? Um, I would just say sellers, now is the time. It's still going to be the time throughout the rent, you know, the rest of the year. If it's snowing, just let your yard <laughs> just keep going. I had a few yard. <laughs> That's right. Let the um, dog do its thing outside. It's all good. Right. And just hire an agent you know, that, that you can really click with. Um, you'll know right from the get-go, the first conversation usually, I feel like that I even have with buyers or sellers, I know whether we're going to click or not, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it just ends up working out a lot better than mm -hmm. for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, no, I think that's great, and, and, and um, I think this was great advice, and I think you guys did a fantastic job. I know you were a little nervous, but I think you guys did a great <laughs> job. So with that, guys, I want to say um, thank you for coming on. Thanks, Thanks for having us. We appreciate it, and we have finalized another episode of All Things Real Estate.